This video is going to serve as a quick and dirty introduction to using a proxy in tandem with Acme on your PFSense machine to serve some pages via reverse proxy with SSL and TLS encrypted traffic. The Acme portion is optional, uh, but it's trivial and good practice. Note that while it makes it much easier, you don't need a domain or dynamic DNS service that allows text records to verify ownership. Um, if you don't have these options, the firewall can host a challenge file for you for validation um, with the WebRoot local folder option or the standalone option. WebRoot local folder requires some messing around with a proxy front end. The standalone option is very easy, you just have to expose a service that runs only while validation is running. It's pretty simple. First, we're going to quickly install the required packages. So navigate to System, Package Manager, Available Packages, and go ahead and install both Acme and Proxy. Once those are ready, we're going to do the Let's Encrypt portion. So let's navigate to Services, Acme Certificates, Account Keys, and press Add. Set a name. Select the Acme server. Uh, Production Acme V2 is what you want to use. Set your email address for validation and press Create New Account Key to generate your key. Once that box is populated with the key, press Register Acme Account Key and press Save. Now that we've got an account key, we can make a cert. So navigate to Certificates and click Add. Fill in a name and description for your reference and ensure that the account you just made is selected below that. Go ahead and scroll down to Domain Sand List, and this is where we'll validate your ownership of the destination on your cert. We're going to operate as though you have a domain, but again, this process does not require one. So if your dynamic DNS service allows text records, uh, like DuckDNS, you can use that. That's quick and dirty. If not, you can use the, lo the WebRoot local folder option. That'll be linked below with some proxy config or the standalone option. Since we're using our own domain, we're going to give ourselves a wildcard cert for subdomain usage. So go ahead and enter the fully qualified domain name as one entry and add an additional entry with the full, fully qualified domain name with an asterisk subdomain as the wildcard. For each of these, you want to select a method that is the integration for your DNS provider if available. Otherwise, you'll have to go with one of the manual options, which will require a few extra steps. After that, go ahead and press save. and It'll return us to the certificates page with an issue and renew button next to our new entry. So if you have anything other than the manual option set on your entries, uh, these buttons are one and done, fire and forget. You hit issue the first time around, then you hit renew the following times if it doesn't support auto renewal, which it should. Uh, but we are using manual, so you have to manually enter the keys that it gives you as text records where your name servers are managed. There's an additional step or two. You'll see that the last renewed field is updated after you issue. That means your cert is valid. Okay, now we'll do the actual reverse proxy steps. So navigate to Services, a Proxy, Settings. You're going to want to check the box at the top to enable the proxy and set your maximum connections to somewhere around 1,000. This is kind of arbitrary, but for now, we'll just have a value set. Set an internal stats port to enable the proxy status monitor, which is very convenient to identify outages or manage your load balancer if you end up using that feature. You can also optionally set up logging and alerts here for a similar purpose. What we need to set is our Diffie-Hellman size, so change max SSL Diffie-Hellman size to 2048 under tuning. And then go ahead and press save, followed by apply changes. Now first up, we'll define some of our servers and some backends first. So navigate to backend and press add. Enter a name. Um, I generally use the subdomain or path that I'm using. So, for example, if you were going to make an Ambi backend, I would just name it Ambi. Add a server entry by pressing the arrow in the server list. Name it and enter the IP address and port that the service is listening on. Note that you do not need to check encrypt or enter any certificate information here. That's all going to be handled by a proxy, not your servers. You can enter multiple servers for a single backend and set the mode to backup for failover or active for load balancing. If you do the latter, you want to select a load balancing method by expanding the load balancing section and selecting whatever is appropriate. Round robin and loose connections are both solid choices. Go ahead and save and apply your settings, and then make a backend for each service you'd like to expose. Also note that for Plex, you're still going to need the port to be forwarded. Uh, even if you use the reverse proxy for access. Now we're going to make front ends for these services. So first we'll make a shared front end 
for all HTTPS traffic. So navigate to front end and click add. Name your service, uh, HTTPS underscore shared works great. Change the port to 443 and check the box for SSL offloading. Optionally enable the separate sockets option in the stats section. Scroll down to SSL offloading and select the certificate that you just created with Acme in the beginning of the video. If you're not using Let's Encrypt, go ahead and leave the port at 80 and offloading settings as is. Press save and apply your changes. Next up, we're going to make an HTTPS enforcement rule. So make a new rule, we'll call it HTTP underscore redirect. Have it listen on WAN at port 80 with no offloading. Scroll down to actions and press the arrow to create one. Change the action to HTTP request redirect and set the rule to scheme HTTPS. Then go ahead and save and apply. And with that, now we can make the individual front ends for your various services. So press add, enter a descriptive name, and check the shared front end box and select HTTPS shared, whatever you named the shared front end we made earlier. We're going to use access control list to define which backend is used based on the subdomain or path given. Um, you can use host starts with or host contains for subdomains and path starts with or path contains for paths. For subdomains, you need that subdomain to be pointing at your WAN address. The path options are more appropriate if you have something like a dynamic DNS setup or you don't have an infinite number of subdomains you can use. In value, set the subdomain or path that will be used to access the service. For example, you'd use just ambi for ambi.domain.com or slash ambi for domain.com slash ambi. Next, create an action with action use backend and set the conditional ACL name value to the name of the rule that you just made above and set the backend to the associated service you're exposing. You can set a default backend here to have something else display if your backend is down, uh, although it is just fine to leave it blank. Go ahead and save and apply your changes. Once you've done this for your various services, we're going to need to make some firewall rules to expose a proxy, and then we'll be set. Navigate to Firewall Rules and create a new one called a Proxy HTTP. Pass IPv4 traffic, TCP only, on the WAN interface with the destination of this firewall at port 80. And for that, you select HTTP in the destination port range from dropdown. Make an identical entry for a proxy HTTPS traffic at port 443. Once these firewall rules are made, your subdomain and paths will now reach the services that you created front ends and back ends for in a proxy. And if you followed the ACME steps at the beginning, the traffic will be secured with SSL TLS encryption.